My name is Dale Harden and I'm the subject leader for history at Moorend Academy. So why study history at Moorend? History is inescapable. It studies the past and the legacies of the past in the present. Far from being a dead subject, it connects things through time and encourages our students to take a long view of such connections. If we study history, we learn about complex cultures, traditions and religions that have evolved over thousands of years. We need to understand history so we can understand what it is to be human, how we invented and developed technology and knowledge that allows us to build and even change based on a secure foundation. This is why history matters. It isn't just useful, it's essential. We study Hitler, the Nazis, William the Conqueror, Hippocrates, and the basis of diagnostic inquiring medical care the 12th century Renaissance, the 15th century Renaissance, Vesalius, Da Vinci, and the influence of Islamic thought and European mathematics, science, and medical care. We look at Ibn Sina, or Avicenna, to Western medieval scholars, writer of hundreds of books on medicine, or Al-Razi, often called the father of surgery. We look at the great and the terrifying, Stalin, Truman, Churchill. Depending on our interpretations, each of these three could be both. We look at World War I and World War II, the Black Death, the Renaissance, the Industrial Revolution, and the Norman Conquest, all pivotal events in the creation of modern society, and we study them all. Would Nye Bevan, the founder of the NHS, recognise what we had made by, from 1948? In history, we use the most rigorous and recent research to support our learning, so the work of Jenner, smashing rumours and hearsay about vaccines, the work of Pasteur to save billions of lives. We will learn it all. We look at cartoons, images, photographs, maps, key texts, and stretch our students to be able to assess virtually any source that they come across. This breadth is demanding, but the skills and abilities the students will attain will be outstanding. What exactly did the Islamic world give the Christian world? What is the key interpretation in the ideological struggle between communism and capitalism, between the free world and fascism? The way that we tackle this gives our students the rigorous approach that they need for exam success, but also the ability to see through hypocrisy and propaganda to reach the truth in this era of fake news and global pandemics. Have we learned to control our violent impulses or is the world a safer place? Are the arguments of the past still echoing through our lives today? Kennedy and Khrushchev, Carter and Brezhnev, Trump and Putin, Biden and Xi. So, will you come with us? We work with every department this year as part of Holocaust Memorial Day and a focus on links with English in particular. A big screen programme proves popular and allows us to look at key events in much, much more depth. We lead school assemblies on Black History Month, Remembrance and the Holocaust, all of which leads to wider understanding of our GCSE. We are currently working through our University College London Beacon School year. It's just one example of the depth of knowledge that we have in our history department, which includes training on civil rights, Islam and Christendom, medieval, early modern and modern history. Two of our staff are currently working on MA modules to continue their own personal history journeys. So we have a wealth of current research, knowledge and experience. So where might your history lead? Much of human experience can be studied through history. Sociology, politics, law, anthropology can all be studied from a historical perspective. There are no careers that good historical knowledge will not help and develop. History helps us to understand revolutionary and evolutionary change, the human condition and how we can make the world a better place. Science, mathematics and more subjects benefit from the knowledge of what has come before and how it will influence and develop what comes next. Finance, law, business, the arts, science and of course education all benefit from the intellectual strength that history brings. A very wise human once said of life and love, of study and knowledge, yesterday I was clever so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise so I am changing myself. Join us and we'll change ourselves and the world together. So for all year groups, from year seven to nine in Key Stage 3, we use the same question stems that occur throughout the two papers of the GCSE. 
Our skills and student familiarity with them mean that we bridge the transition between Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 seamlessly. The greater detail, the wider context are all part of the same process that we have been using since the students started attending Moore End Academy. These are our assessment objectives and form part of both papers that we complete as part of our GCSE. In paper one, we learn about Germany from 1890 to 45, and then the Cold War from 1945 to 72. This gives us continuity from the periods before World War I to the periods after World War II, the setting up of the Cold War and the threat of nuclear devastation that dominated the rest of the 20th century. In paper two, we learn about a thousand years of history, and at Moore End we complete this through study of health and the people from 1000 to 2021, which encompasses the move from the Dark Ages to the restoration of classical Greek and Roman medicine, and then the blooming of medical advances from the Islamic period, the Renaissance, and then the Industrial Age, to the modern medical and scientific approaches of the last 200 years. We also look at the Normans in England as part of our historical environment studies, covering the conquest of 1066 and the establishment of the Anglo-Norman monarchy. We then focus on an area of the historic environment and for this year our exam and cohort in 2023 will focus on Yorkshire, which we're very excited about. These are our assessment objectives and form part of both papers that we complete as part of our GCSE. In paper one we learn about Germany and the Cold War. This gives us continuity. In paper two we learn about a thousand years of history and as I've said, we study health and the people from the Dark Ages right the way through to the modern scientific approaches of the last 200 years. We also look at the Normans in our historic environment study. And as I said, we're excited to be studying about Yorkshire. Paper one, therefore, is divided into two sections and we study topics that help us understand the modern world. That's Germany from 1890 to 1945 and conflict and tension between East and West, 1945 to 72. Paper two is also divided into two sections and we study health and the people from 1000 to 2021 and Norman England from 1066 to 1100. This is called our historic environment study and we learn about a key part of England's history through key buildings and places. 70% of our course is made up of knowledge and the explanation and analysis of the key events and individuals that we study. We also have second order historical concepts such as cause and consequence, change, continuity and significance, which are useful for all of the assessment objectives. The use of sources appears on all the papers and requires students to make judgments based on their knowledge and understanding, which is a direct link to AO1 and AO2. The use of interpretations in history appears mainly in paper one and requires students to be able to work out why people's views of the same events or individuals may differ, a crucial skill for any young historian. All of these skills we practice throughout years seven to nine, therefore year 10 and year 11 are a development of what students have already studied and the transition is therefore seamless and successful. We also relive all that we study through revision skills and practice in preparation for the final examinations. Thank you for listening and I hope you join us in GCSE history.